Hello there. This is Michelle Schaefer, Senior Consultant at Ambit Energy. I want to thank you all for getting on this great call to prepare your upcoming week and sharing your Sunday evening with us. Uh, we believe that this, this is a silver bullet for your business to have structure in your week where you spend 30 to 40 minutes a day doing the simple things we need to do. So have your top 10 names ready, your calendars open, a pen and a piece of paper in hand so you can prepare your week right along with us. And please free, feel free to share this with other teams. This call is open to everyone. We want everyone to be successful and have success in your business. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce the host. If you're not familiar with this gentleman, he is an executive consultant in our business. He, he is what you call financially free, which means at the end of the month, whether he works or not, his bills are paid, which is something I'm looking forward to. I'm, I hope all of us are. He is a businessman in his own right. He had a business he sold for several million dollars a few years back. He owns three Dickies barbecue restaurants. He also is a musician. He owns a music box company. And um, he is very well versed in business and he is very creative and he's brought us not only the purse call but 3x4 and several other um, fantastic tools that we can use for our business. So without further ado, I would like to introduce my dear friend and my mentor, Mr. Richard Laidler. Hello there, lovely. Are you there? I'm here. How are you? Fantastic. We missed you while you were up north and uh, now you're home. It just feels a little better now you're home. (laughs) <laughs> everything, just feels, feels... everything just feels a little warmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. I mean, it's got cold this week, and as soon as you come home, the weather warms up just a little bit because the little bit of sunshine in our life, Michelle Schaefer has come back to Texas. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, here we are, 8 o'clock on Sunday evening. Guys, thank you very much for getting on the call. Um, thank you for taking the time out to spend some time with us, and... Give yourselves a congratulatory pat on the back for taking out an hour of your day to prepare for your week. This one hour of preparation uh, will save you hours uh, during the week just because you're organized. Hours of stressing, I really should be doing something. I really should be getting my calls done, but nothing's planned so it doesn't get done. And that's the purpose of this particular call. Um, and that's, that's why we do this call. That's why we have this uh, particular call. It's to structure your ambit week. It's to basically make sure you don't start your week with that wonderment, I really should be doing something with my ambit business this week. And, and for those of you who use the Energy Gold Rush system or the Code 24 system, the purge works alongside all of them because all of those are all about showing the plan. They're all about giving people the presentation in whatever format that that is. This is getting the opportunity to show the plan. So if you're an Energy Gold Rush person or a Code 24 person or whatever way you like to show the system and track your individuals, it doesn't matter. Any one of those work with what we're doing on the purge. As I say, the purge is all about making sure that you have a structured week, um, that you treat your ambit business with the same respect as you treat your job. Um, And then with that structure, basically, then you can apply whatever system to show the, the presentation you need. So uh, it works along with any of them. Um, you see, the thing is that we, what we do is really simple. All we have to do when we start our Ambit business is get ourselves a couple of customers, get ourselves qualified, two customers in Texas, three customers outside Texas. Then we need to just find three folks who want to join our team because they have their own dreams, their own needs, or they just, you know, they're, well, whatever, their own pain, or they just want to have their own business. So what we do is real simple. A couple of customers, three folks in our team, and then we just duplicate it. The thing is, it's so gosh darn simple to do, but the problem is it's actually simpler not to do it. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that again. It is so simple to do. It is even simpler not to do, and the reason why I know that is because of the number of people who, in such a simple business, actually quit. We know that in, it's, a, it's a, going to be at least 85% of people quit their ambit business for absolutely no reason. They didn't quit school. Um, most on this call, I would imagine, graduated. Most on here will have a job. You don't quit your job. There's very few times you may quit your job or you may have it quit for you, but very few times. Most of us will get through school and graduate. Most of us will have our job, and we do what we do. 
why can we succeed at those things but not at our ambit business? We need to treat the ambit business, as I was saying, with the same respect as we do as we do in our job. We don't have to be rock stars at our job. We don't have to be rock stars at our school. No one has to remind us of our why we're doing our job or why we're at school. All we need to do is show up. All we need to do is show up. And the job gets done. We get paid. The company succeeds. You get your exams done. You graduate high school. Ambit is exactly the same. If you are a rock star, then awesome. That's great. But you know and I know um, that you can look through the magazines and you can find the rock stars, but that's out of three or 400,000 consultants. If you're lucky enough to be a rock star yourself, then that's great. If you're lucky enough to find a rock star, then that's great. But if you're sitting and waiting and sifting through people to find a rock star, you may be looking for a long time. And that's why we have this particular system. We just need two customers to get ourselves qualified, three outside Texas. We need three people to join our team, people who are sick and tired of what they're doing, people who want a business of their own, people who want to get the college funds paid for, whatever it is. You do not have to be a rock star to do that. You just need to do what we need to do, just like you did at school, just like you do at, at, uh, in your job. And the purge call is in its it's trying to duplicate that environment and structure and accountability we have in our job to get as close to the same obligation as you do in your job. It's not perfect because the job can fire you. You can get sent to see the principal. We don't have quite that fear of loss in the purge, but the nearest we can get to it is a good accountability partner who will, who's going to hold you accountable. So make sure you have a good accountability partner. Unless you're really good at doing it yourself, and dare I say that it's only really the true rock stars that do that, that are probably 3% of the ambit people. So make sure you get yourself a good accountability partner. Not good in that they're skillful with the ambit business, but good in that they will hold you to what you say you said you're going to do. So make sure you get yourself a good accountability partner. So the purpose of this call is to make sure you start your week with a... I know what I'm doing this week. The 30 to 60 minutes a day is planned. It's in my calendar. And it's to make sure that you're accountable. And it's to make sure that you get done the simple things we need to do. Remember, it's really simple to do, but it's much simpler not to do. And that's why we must have that environment and accountability to make sure we do it. Because everyone on this call started their ambit business for a reason. I don't think you started your ambit business just for something to do. I don't know, maybe there's someone on the call who does. But most of us started their ambit business because... They're sick and tired of something, or they want more time. They want more money. All the things we see when we see the why in the business presentations. So everybody on this, on this call is started their ambit business for a reason. Now we just need to make sure it gets done. And the way to get it done is not to sit there and think, I've got to be a rock star. No, you don't. Just show up. Just have an accountability partner. For those of you who are brand new on the, on the, on the call, and I can, there's a lot of people in here I don't know their names, so I'm assuming you're new MCs. Plug into your, uh, your sponsor. Allow them. Give them permission to be your accountability partner. Almost, almost like your boss for a while. Not because you need to be bossed around, but because you need to be guided. And that's what this call is all about. It's about a Sunday night and then Monday through Friday. Here are the must-dos. Here is what we have to do in this purge system that we have. We must have a written list. So for those of you who are brand new, please get yourselves a written list. And that's basically a list of names of people you know. Everything from someone you kind of know, the guy at the gas station, the um, your friend's brother's uh, attorney brother you heard about, all the way to your brothers and sisters and everything in between. Do not prejudge. Just write a list down. Again, go to your accountability partner. Go to your sponsor to help you write a list. There is the training on how to write a written list in the uh, back office under Ambit to you. Uh, I know it sounds boring. I know it does. I felt the same way when I first got started, but you have to have a written list. And, and I had one of my consultants who I work with on a daily basis, and we kind of got to a confessions time, and she said, I don't have uh, a very extensive written list. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, this Saturday, let's get together for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then I'll help you write a list. And we did. We got on the call. We got on Skype together. She was on the other end of Skype. I was 
uh, on this end, and I said, and I went to the Ambit U. I got out the memory jogger in there, and we went through about two and a half pages. You know, who's your best friend? Who was your um, maid of honor at your wedding? Who's you know who do you know who drives a BMW? Who do you know who's this? And we got to 50 names in literally 30, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, that was just and that was, so that 20 to 30 minutes, 50 names. We got them all scored, which is the next thing is to make sure you score them using the Erica system. Again, as those of you who are brand new, it's just a means of being able to put those people in order. So everyone's going to get a call. Everyone's going to get a, hey, you, may, you know, I want you to take a look at what I'm doing. But what it does is it brings the people who may be um, a little bit more skilled, a little bit more, um, a little bit better for you in your business. It brings them to the top of your list. Um, and uh, if you want to know how to score using the Erica system, there was a call I did. Um, and it's actually posted up on the EC Riders Facebook page. So if you're not a member of EC Riders, uh, as uh, Michelle was talking about, go to Facebook, go to EC Riders and look up, um, uh, get, get yourself joined on there and, and scroll down a little bit and you'll see a post up there for the call on how to score your list. Um, then once you've done that, we, you need to, on Sunday, allocate an hour to prepare your week, which is what this hour is all about. Um, probably a Sunday, but you can be flexible. From that list you've created, which is in order of the, of the better people at the top and the uh, not quite so better people, for want of a better, uh, for want of a better way of putting it. But I didn't want to say the, the not so good people because everyone's potentially good, and you can ne you never know who's going to help you build your business or connect you with other folks. You pull your top ten names from that list, um, then with your accountability partner, and you'll hear that what, how that goes on this call. I'm going to be an accountability partner for our new willing victim on the call today. We're going to you're going to basically put invites together. Um, uh, to, to, to create the perfect invite, or not even the perfect invite, a good, relevant invite to have them look at the business. It doesn't have to be absolutely pristine. It just needs to be um, relevant, and it has to be done in a certain way, which is very, very simple. There's five steps to the invite, and we'll cover those during the call. Once you've got your invites down, I cannot emphasize enough that you write your invites down, because when it comes to calling someone when you first get started, you're kind of nervous, and when you're nervous, you start talking too much or you start disappearing down a rabbit hole you never meant to start. Whereas if you write your invitations down, it's going to be about 20 seconds to 30 seconds of an invite. It's written down in note form. It'll keep you on track. So you've got your 10 names, the 10 invites written for them, and then what we're going to do is allocate time in your calendar for two invites during your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, put put them in your calendar with an alert, 10 o'clock or the time when you have, you know, mid-morning coffee or whatever it is. An alert comes up on your phone. Make an invite call. Just a little reminder. And then one at lunchtime or one on the drive home. Whatever it is. Remember, it's only 30 to 60 minutes a day, but you do have to do it. Sorry, guys. You do have to do it. You do have to do your job because you want to get your bills paid. You do have to do it. If you want your Ambit business to work, you do have to do it. But all we're talking about is 30 to 60 minutes a day. Um, with those, with those um, uh, two invites, uh, those two calls you're doing on invites, we have one accountability call as well. It's about a 10-minute call to your accountability partner at the end of the day just to say how your calls went. They could have gone well. They could have gone bad. It doesn't matter. It's just to make sure that you get those calls done. Because remember, we talked at the beginning of this call, you only need three consultants to join you in this business. So it doesn't take you very long to find those three as long as you're doing the two invites a day with the accountability call. And then the following Sunday, which we will do with our on the next Sunday, you purge your list. You go through your week of 10 names. Some will have said, no, it's not for me right now, and so you'll purge them. And they will get called back in three to six months on a per, from a, a, a drip list that you're going to be creating. Some will need validation. They've had a look at the business and they have some questions or want to see a business presentation. And some will say yes, and they'll join your business. <clears throat> so that's it. Written list. Score it with the Erica system. Pull down your top ten names on Sunday. Two invite, to, two invite calls Monday through Friday, an accountability call Monday through Friday, and then purge your list. Around those you do some, uh, you know, if you get an opportunity, if you bump into someone who's got some pain and, God, I wish I could get out of this job or whatever, there's, there's other opportunities to invite people. It doesn't have to just be the people on your list. 
if you bump into a guy at AT and T and he's sick and tired of his job there, and you can say, well, you know what, you may want to have a look at something I'm doing. You can do that as well alongside what you're currently doing. And then three uh, three more things you do in addition to that and your week is get yourself to one business presentation during the week, um, whether you have a guest or not. It's like going to church; it kind of re, re, re uh, kind of renews your uh, re-energizes your soul, keeps you just plugged in. It also offers support to those other folks in the business presentation. Uh, also get on your team call, whoever that happens to be. We have our EC Riders call on Wednesday nights. For those of you who are opted in to the text program that I have, I send out a notification when we have our team call. Uh, and then, of course, this purge call. Uh, and that's it. That's your week. That's your ambit week. It is microscopic compared to your job, but your income is going to outperform the income you get from your job. So it's well worth um, investing the time. So make the decision to do this. Make the decision to dedicate the 30 to 60 minutes a day because I promise you this. If you do this purge call every week, and remember, we're not talking very much. We're talking a very, very, very part-time effort during the week. I guarantee you will have 100% chance of succeeding. Some will be faster than others, depending on just the way it goes. But everyone on this call, everyone who plugs in, everyone who does the purge call Monday or Sunday to Sunday will get to EC guaranteed with your money back. And if you order in the next 10 minutes, you'll get a double delivery. I'm just telling you, it's very simple what we do. And if you just do the basic things, we'll get there. But let me tell you this. The only way you're not going to get there is if you quit. Just plug in 100% into the system and just don't quit. But I'll tell you on the other side of that, if you don't apply a structure, I'm going to say this structure as well. If you don't apply the purge call or any kind of structure or one, as I say, one like it, I don't care how strong your why is, how skilled you are, how pretty you are, how buff you are, how strong you are, how great a businessman you are. The odds say, not me, the odds say that 85% of you will uh, not succeed. That's it. So I can't say it any more frank than that. This is the silver bullet, bullet of all silver bullets. So what I want to do is I want to get on with the call. Uh, I've kind of gone on a little bit because I want to make sure that people truly understand what they have to do on this call because I know there's a lot of people who still get on this purge call who don't have a full written list. And let me tell you, if you don't have a full written list that is, is scored using the Erica system, you will have a modicum of success. It's certainly better than no system. <coughs> but if you do have a, a written list and it's done properly, um, then the efficiency of this system will be, uh, it'll be threefold. You'll have so much more success. And let me tell you, the little bit of pain we feel as we learn an Ambit business, so we, the, that little bit of pain is insignificant to the pain of regret if we don't do it, okay? So just remember that. So with that, I want to bring on our this week's willing victim. Um, I've added the word willing because people were thinking, wow, victim sounds so ominous. And uh, in fact, last week's, um, uh, last week, uh, last week's um, guest uh, rather, was rather preferred to be called uh, a protege. So he was my protege. But we're back to victims this week, unless, this, unless my guest wants to be called a protege this time. But uh, I want to bring on um, uh, this week's uh, uh, guest and uh, willing victim. Um, now, this, and this is a different one because I don't know this gentleman. I know of him because I know he gets on these calls and I know he likes these calls a lot. Um, I know he's a senior consultant and he's been in the Comma Club for five years. So he is a successful Ambit consultant. But the great thing is, for the first time, he's from the Northeast. We've always had people from the Texas area, and I want to always kind of throw myself under the bus a little bit and, and make it a little uncomfortable and see if the Northeast is any different. So what I would like to do is to bring on our willing victim, uh, senior consultant Mark Peterson. Are you there, Mark? I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well. How are you, my friend? Perfect. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Oh, I'm a little uh, – you can tell I'm already on my soapbox, so I'm a little, <laughs> so I'm a little tired. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Mark, thank you so much for getting on the call, and um, uh, and I really appreciate it. It was uh, relatively last minute. I know you were at, uh, were at a musical this afternoon with your wife, and uh, you very kindly stepped out during the interval to um, uh, have a conversation with me um, to, to agree to come on the call, and I really appreciate it. Thanks very much, Mark. Yeah, my pleasure. 
cool. All right, well, um, I, I would be interested in this because I, I know very, very little about you, Mark. Would you mind kind of spending a, a minute or so just talking a little bit about yourself um, and maybe why you got into the business uh, and, um, yeah, just a little, you know, maybe the age group you're in, your kind of family situation, work situation, and why Ambit uh, was appealing to you. Sure, yeah. Um, so I'm in my early 50s. I am an engineer, software engineer. I've been doing that for 28 years or so. And uh, when I started out my career, I worked for a big company. Um, a few years into it, I decided to uh, take a job with a new startup company and thought, boy, if you know they take off and I work real hard to help, then their success will help me be successful. I didn't really think about what would happen if they weren't successful. Um, <laughs> we don't, do we? <laughs> <laughs> ends up I put a lot of time into a company and didn't get a whole lot out of it. Um, right. So, you know, one of the things that happened all, along that whole process is that we invested a lot of our uh, – I invested a lot of our time and money. Um, we ended up going into a significant amount of debt. Um, and uh, so that was our primary reason for looking for something else. And uh, it's difficult to, um, when you're working as a, a full-time salaried, uh, I was as high as director of engineering at that company, um, it's very difficult to start a traditional business. I was traveling all the time with them, and so, you know, finding something that I could do in my spare time to earn extra money was very challenging. My wife and I were actually exploring other investment and business opportunities, other ways of uh, actually uh, learning from Robert Kiyosaki about uh, passive or residual income. And it was when we met somebody there who introduced us to Ambit and it fit exactly for our need. My wife is also, uh, she works full time right now. She's in school full time as well, um, is hoping to start her own nonprofit. We had the pleasure of meeting Dana at the uh, power trip up here, actually, and right. he, he talked quite a bit. He's that was a he's a great person. Had a lot of fun getting to know him. Um, and then I have two boys. Uh, one, both are married. The youngest got married this summer, and my oldest is uh, been married a few years and has a daughter. So I'm a grandpa as well. And I would definitely love to have more time and more resources to be able to visit my oldest son, who's in the Air Force, uh, whenever we want. My youngest son is here in town where we live, so we get to see him more often. But So that's a little bit about where, where we are and where we came from. But my wife actually, like I said, hopes to start her own nonprofit, and our goal is to uh, – right now she's making about the same – we're making the same in Ambit as she makes during her day job, um, and right. we'd like to double that so she can retire from her day job and – and support herself without having to be a burden on the nonprofit she starts so she can pour the resources into that, um, other people that she needs to help her with that. So, Let, let me ask you a question, Mark. When, with, bearing in mind you've been that you're in your 50s, so you've grown up through the 60s and 70s and 80s of, of other network marketing companies out there, and you're a business owner you know, and director of engineering. You're pretty much, you're up there you know, with similar age. Did you have any kind of stigma feeling before you joined the business? Um, you know, I never participated in any network marketing companies directly that I know of. There are a few things where we did parties for uh, companies just to get toys for our kids or whatever, but didn't really – nobody explained that there was a residual income opportunity with those. Okay. Um, so a friend of mine introduced us to Ambit or not Ambit, Amway years ago. And yeah. uh, I thought it was just a sales opportunity and I wasn't really interested in sales. So, And I didn't know that much about the product, so it wasn't too exciting for me. So I, right. if I had known more about residual income, I might have jumped on to one of those and, and done more with it. But mm -hmm. I didn't, and so I haven't really gotten much of a stigma about them ahead of time. Oh, okay. All right. Just interested because I know when I first got started and I did do Amway, it was presented to me in the correct way. Uh, I did have stigma attached to um, any kind of network marketing company, and I had to get through that, um, you know, over the, my first few months in the business. So uh, 
It was just kind of interesting to see if you if if you shared that. But uh, you know, again, you didn't do the Amway business, so you had no reason to have any kind of stigma attached to it. But let's press sure. on. You know, we're we're 25 minutes into the call, so I want to make sure we get as much done as possible. Uh, we're not going to get all of our invites done for all 10 calls today, so we'll do as many as we can in the time that we have, and then we'll do some more invites uh, on the accountability calls during the week. So as Michelle said. For those of you who want to learn more about how we do the invites on the um, some of the other invites, do listen to the accountability calls. Um, they're, they're, sometimes they're like 10 minutes, sometimes they're a little longer. But you know, listen them, listen to them on the way into work, on the way back from work. You know, you, I can uh, accompany you and your drive uh, as you're battling uh, traffic. Um, but there's some really good. I would say the best training is actually on those accountability calls. So do make sure you have a listen to those. But um, Let's dive straight on in, and uh, I've got a couple of questions for you first, Mark, and I'm sure you've heard me ask uh, sure. other um, uh, guests before. My first question is, do you have a written list? Yes, I do. Okay, correct answer. Uh, <laughs> all right, secondly, did you, do you score it using the Erica system? I have been recently, yeah. I, I didn't start out doing that um, when I first started the Ambit business, but um, really just learning about the value of it. Um, from you and listening to you, I think uh, it definitely uh, decided it was valuable to do that. Of course, it puts people it's, it's at the top of my list that are would be on my chicken list. So, and that that's exactly right. Because otherwise, let me tell you, if you don't do the Erica system, you'll you'll do two things: you'll avoid the people on your chicken list, and you will then cherry pick out of your list. You'll go through the list and think. Hmm, who's going to be nicest to me? Hmm, who's going to be nicest to me? <laughs> and uh, that's not the way to do it because you just never know where your um, next RC or SC or EC is going to come from. So do um, score your um, list using the Erica system. It's not just a little bit of fun or a trick or a reason to put it into an order for no reason. It really is a very genuine thing. And then when it comes to pulling down your top 10 names, you pull down the top 10 names, whatever they are. And then you create uh, invites and accountability around some people that you might be scared of um, calling. And I can tell you, I can see a number of alumni on the call who I know um, uh, were forced to call on their chicken list, had a very pleasant call, and indeed some even joined their businesses. So um, usually the people on the chicken list are very often the type of people who would be great in your business as well. So great, good for you for having a written list. I'm glad you got it scored using the Erica system. Um, and I'm assuming you pulled down your top ten names? I did, yep. Okay, if you could just uh, read through the top ten names, first names only, no last names, please, uh, and fast enough uh, to not be too long, but not too fast that I can't write them down really quickly. Who are the top ten people, please? Okay, first is Greg. Mm -hmm. The second is Sunny. The yep. third is Tom. Mm -hmm. Fourth is Charles. Mm -hmm. The fifth is Dave. Mm -hmm. Sixth is Paul. Mm -hmm. Seventh is Lynn. Mm -hmm. Eighth is Brian. Mm -hmm. The ninth is Dave. And mm -hmm. the tenth is Graham. Okay. All right. Sunny, is Sunny a man or a woman? A man. Uh, and Lynn, man or woman? A man. Man. And and Lynn's wife is Jerry, so that's good fun for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always know to just double check. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, let's start with let, let's start with Greg. Let's jump straight on in. First of all, how old is Greg? Greg is uh, about my age. Um, Early fifties. Yep. Kids. Nope. Married? Only got only got married a few years ago. So. Okay. Are you aware of any pain he has? Uh, yes. Uh, Greg and I have worked together for many years, actually. Um, and uh, he's the chief operating officer of one of the companies I used to work for. And uh, I talk to him on a regular basis. He's definitely struggling with the the company he and I both worked for uh, was bought out a few years ago and the ownership he's been challenged by the new owners essentially yeah. so and not so it's not a financial pain it's just a uh, maybe a political situation right 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark, what's your what's your wife's name? Lori, L O R I. Okay, cool. Uh, and let me ask you real quick, what, what's your what's your why? Why are you doing this business? Just real quick, just like you know, twenty seconds. Well, uh, I really would like to um, own my own success, and as an employee, I don't own my own success. And part of what I define as success is being able to choose when I work and who I work with and um, when I want to take time off. And I believe that Ambit is the best way to get there. What about financial? Any uh, Are you set financially or is it going to help you financially with retirement and stuff? No, I think Ambit is also, from a financial perspective, is going to be um, our best opportunity to retire from, from working. So uh, we still okay. have some debt. Uh, we started out with a lot of debt. We've been whittling that down, but want to eliminate all of our debt through Ambit as well. Okay. And you know Greg well, right? I do, yes. I, I, this seems pretty uh, obvious to me. I'm, I'm going to help you with uh, you know, the first couple until we kind of get a feel for it, and I'll ask you what your opinions are. This seems pretty easy to me. Um, we, we follow the five rules. Again, you probably – or not good rules, guidelines for creating an invite. Um, and, again, those of you who are um, listening on the call, make sure you write your invites down. It will keep you on track when you're doing your invite. Um, but I, I would go with, a, uh, again, the five rules. Are, first of all, we're always in a hurry. Um, secondly, uh, we will you know, use our why um, and their why if it's relevant because then they're listening with their heart and not their ears. We have a hook, which is the excitement. Um, the company's really growing really well. It's going to represent... Um, uh, the, getting my retirement paid off the hook, something that's really exciting. A takeaway uh, may or may not be your cup of tea for a couple of reasons. It keeps it nice and relaxed. No one feels pressured. And then a very intentional tying down of the um, um, uh, of the actual date uh, on time when you're going to see them. So with Greg, you know, you have the friendship. I would I would be along the lines of, hey Greg, uh, this is this is Mark here. Listen, I'm in a little bit of a hurry. I've got to get back into um, the office for a conference call, and I know you're super busy. Do you, do you have a minute? And he, he'll say yes, and he'll say, well, Greg, I've been meaning to give you a call. Um, uh, you know, as you know, um, uh, we've obviously worked in businesses together, um, and, you know, we have the same kind of aspirations from, you know, owning our own success and choosing when we can come in and out of work and, and this type of thing. But also, you know, uh, 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 Laurie and I are very keen to make sure we have a strong retirement so we can actually – get out of full-time employment. Now, Greg, I know you have, you know, very similar aspirations to um, to Laurie and I, and uh, we've started a part-time business project that's working alongside what we currently do that is having really gra- great success up here in the Northeast and, in fact, also down in Texas around the country. We're a 1.5 uh, – we've partnered with a $1.5 billion company, and we're really excited um, with what we're doing. It's going to have our – retirement paid um, so that we can quit what we're doing. But more than anything else, as I said, I really like the opportunity to be, to own, to be able to own my own success. And, and Greg, quite frankly, I'd like you to take a look at what I'm doing because I think this could really align with what you're looking to do, especially bearing in mind your situation in your current employment. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be your thing, Greg, and truly that is perfectly fine. Your friendship with me is more important um, than any kind of uh, business deal. But, you know, as a friend, you know, if I'm having success with something, then obviously it makes sense that I should share it with you. Um, and, and I want to get together for a coffee sometime. Now, I don't know what time you finish work, but maybe 5.30 tomorrow night. I know there's a Starbucks just around the corner um, uh, where we can grab a coffee and I can show you what time we're doing that. Or we can do it after church on Sunday. What, what would be best for you? So, I've kind of gone in a lot of detail on that, Mark, so that those of people who are on the call uh, kind of get the idea of the five stages, being in a hurry, using your why and their why, the hook. And I, I talked about you having your retirement paid and owning your own success. And then you heard me do the takeaway um, and then being very intentional about setting the time. Um, that's how I would approach Greg. I don't know if that feels comfortable for you or makes sense for you. Is that the time sure. The, yeah, the only to tweak actually is that he and I plan on getting together. Um, we talked a little bit last week about getting together this Friday. Um, I have Friday mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. And so I just wanted to 
if, if you think this is the right way to do it, basically ask his permission. Go through the same kind of thing, but while we're getting together, I'd also like to talk to you about this business um, that my wife and I have been involved in. Um, yeah, I, something like you that. have to. I, I yes, absolutely can, but be careful. Uh, and this is okay. you know this. You're a strong SC, but again, for those on the call, um, don't assume that you know just because you're getting together with someone that you you know can just start talking about uh, business. Um, without asking permission prior to the call. Uh, right. I, I kind of like two different meetings. If I'm going to meet someone socially and it's going to be social, I kind of like to keep it social um, and then, you know, arrange a business meeting. I like to keep them separate because it's very much a respectful thing from my, perspe from my perspective. I don't want to feel like I'm taking advantage or ambush someone in a social environment. I believe we only need three. We can be very patient in this business, and someone like Greg would be an incredibly great asset, and sometimes it's worth taking your time. But you know Greg better than I do. You know why you're getting together on Friday. If you feel mm -hmm. that that would be um, appropriate, um, I definitely would make sure that you um, make sure that Greg knows that you're going to be talking about uh, a business, uh, you know, letting him know about a business that you're doing and that may be something for him as well, just to make sure we're not right. ambushing him. Okay. Cool. Yep. Oh, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect way to do that. For guys, if you, for those of you who are listening on the call, um, there's a lot of information in that. Uh, I will make sure that I post this call up on the on the EC Writers Facebook page. By all means, listen back and get the tips from that uh, as to how you should invite someone similar. All right. So let's move on. Uh, let's uh, talk about Sunny. Okay. So Sunny is a business owner that uh, I'm a customer of his. Um, I see him occasionally, not, you know, every week or anything like that, but uh, I, I see him, you know, two, three times a year anyway. Um, he recognizes me, um, but we aren't uh, friends like I am with Greg. Um, he's a very successful businessman, um, owns multiple businesses, really, but I'm a customer of one of those. So what is the business? It, uh, he's a dentist. Uh, okay. Uh, would you say his work is seasonal? Probably not. Um, I think that the, the, the challenge dentists have is, is that they can't take time off. You know, if they yeah, he has multiple. Off, he, he has a big practice with multiple dentists. Okay. So. Uh, all right. Well, well, let me ask you, uh, as, as a seasoned SC in the business, what's your gut feeling as to how you should approach him? I've got a feeling how I would. What would how would you do it? Do you think? I think I would look for his opinion essentially. Yeah. Um, I, I would I would do I would do a two prong. I would go for an opinion and an opportunity to network. Uh, I think business owners, as uh, us as business owners, we like to know each other. We like to connect yeah. people. We, he, that'll really appeal to him. There's no synergy really in the business. You know, your electricity, he's teeth. You know, there's not like it's a realtor and, you know, what we do. There's no synergy there. So, so sure. yeah, I agree with you 100%. I would go for an opinion approach and also an opportunity to um, to network. So it would be, I would say, hey, Sonny, um, this is this is Mark. Um, you, uh, obviously, you know me. I, you look at my teeth. Uh, I'm assuming, by the way, he, he fixes your teeth, right? A, a customer from a, you are his customer as a dental deal, right? Yes, yes, and cool. actually okay. I have an appointment with him on Tuesday. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I want you to invite him whilst he's invading your mouth, <laughs> just for the laugh. <laughs> just for, I'd like to see how that came out. <laughs> but I would, uh, no, I would, I think obviously the opportunity is probably going to be face-to-face. -face. Um, I, I would, you know, so make sure you're, you uh, invite him on the way out, uh, whilst you're on the way out, so he doesn't collar you and say, well, what is it you need to talk about? Because um, you can, you need to be in a hurry still. So if it's face to face, sure. then you've got the excuse that I need to get back to work. Um, mm -hmm. But I've been meaning to, uh, Sunny, I've been meaning to get together with you. Like, like you, I'm a, I'm a, a fellow business owner. Um, but uh, more importantly than that, uh, you don't. I'm sure he doesn't know your wife, Laurie. But my, uh, we've, we, we're actually spearheading the growth of a company up here in the northeast. Um, that's uh, having tremendous success up here. We've partnered with a billion and a half dollar company that's having, um, a, a, as I say, wonderful success and has grown into numerous states. 
Um, there's even talk of uh, maybe uh, at some point moving internationally. Um, and quite frankly, Sonny, I want to get together out, away from the, the dental practice because uh, I'd like you to take a look at what I'm doing for a couple of, uh, couple of reasons. First of all, just two business owners, we need to know each other from a networking opportunity. I'd like you to know what I'm doing. Um, and, again, you know, it's an opportunity for just two business owners to get to know each other. But more importantly than that, Sonny, you know, obviously from on, on the outside, I see you have tremendous success uh, with what you're doing. Um, and quite frankly, I would really appreciate your opinion on what we're doing um, and would uh, really respect any thoughts um, you would uh, or opinions or any thoughts you would have on how maybe we could expand in the uh, throughout the Northeast. I know you know a lot of people. Um, so uh, certainly would appreciate the connections as well. Now, there's no real need here for a takeaway because we're not telling him to necessarily join the business. But I would then so go straight away for saying so. I don't know, you know, what your hours are like here from a dental perspective, but when's a good time for us to grab a coffee? Um, that, that's the approach that I would go, and I'm sure that's what you had in mind. Yeah. Um, but I would definitely mix um, uh, opinion with networking opportunity because then yeah. you're giving him something. Because if you're just asking for his opinion, it's all about him giving you something. But if it's a networking thing, then he, uh, you're going to help him, you know, with a network opportunity, networking opportunity in the other direction. So there's a bit of give and take. So I don't know if that makes sense at all to you. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Very good. Cool. All right. So, again, we followed the five things. We were in a hurry. Even though we were face-to-face, -face, we were in a hurry. And let me just spend 10 seconds on that. Um, this being in a hurry is really crucial. Let me give you another example. Let's say you're going to a gym with a friend of yours and you're going to go and work out with him for an hour. And the first thing that comes out of his mouth is, you know, I'm pretty, you know, bummed out today because I got fired. How tempting would it be if you're brand new in the business to jump down his throat with this latest, greatest opportunity um, that he should take a look at because he's just lost his job? Please um, uh, don't do that. Um, re just resist the temptation uh, wait until the end of your workout even to the point when you're walking out to your cars and listen to him during the work you know where you commiserate with him not disingenuously but you know I'm really sorry you had a hard time and I'm really sorry you've lost your job you know what are you doing about looking for something else and just being really nice and on the way when you're going out to the car that's when you have an opportunity to invite and say you know hey Joe uh, listen I I don't know. If I've just thought about this. I don't know why I didn't mention it in the gym, but uh, what time are you going to be home by a computer? I've got something that may be able to help you out between now and your next job. And he says, uh, I'll be home at, uh, I'll be home in 15 minutes. Great. And then if you have his number, great. But if not, say, what's, what's your number? I'll give you a call. I want to send you some information. But the point is there, I'm just saying, make sure you wait until the end of a face-to-face -face visit to get the opportunity to make the invite so you don't get dragged in. All right, so I took a little time on that, but I hear it all the time when people jump in and try and invite, and they're gonna be sitting in front of them for an hour, and they're trying to avoid getting dragged into a business presentation, and it's the worst feeling you can ever have. So um, with that, let's move on. That's uh, Sunny, let's move on to Tom. Good, Tom, yeah. So Tom is somebody I met on an airplane recently. He's a, a sales manager for uh, Northeast region, and uh, seemed to have a really good business sense. Um, I believe I gave him a magazine, actually, to take a look at, but didn't set up an appointment to follow up with him. So I wanted to uh, connect with him and, and set up a time where we could uh, talk about uh, if he had watched the DVD and, and talk about what he thought. Okay. What, how do you feel you should, uh, you should approach him? Uh, in this Any case, idea? I think I I would like to to be real direct with them and and yeah yeah, yeah I, I couldn't agree more I I would I, I again if he's a sales manager I, I would talk about spearheading um, the growth of a billion and a half dollar company in the Northeast um, and you know to to help us do that we're looking for really sharp leadership um, that can build. Uh, to can help us build, and you know, it, hey, it may or may not be your thing, whatever his name is. Uh, Tom, right. Tom, it may or may not be your thing, but uh, you know, I was really impressed when we, with the time we spent together on the airplane. Obviously, you're very sharp at what you do. I'd like you to look at what we're doing. I don't know if it's going to be your thing, but um, uh, I'd like to set up a time when we can uh, get together 
you know, when, when's usually a good time for you? When you finish work or, or, or you know, is the lunchtime better for you? So, so yeah, I would go totally direct. I, I would, okay. again, talk about speed, spearheading expansion of a billion and a half dollar company. So we're talking, you know, business. <coughs> There's no yeah. point in you talking about your why because he doesn't know you. He doesn't care. Right. I don't mean that meanly, but it's kind of just the way well, it is. He's a, sure. he's a sales guy. Yep. Yeah. So I, that's a real simple one. Yep. Did you have anything to add to that? No, I think that's exactly what I was thinking about doing. So. Cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's. That's a nice. Although, although one. just let's from a yeah. from a perspective, I really like you know the spearheading the growth of a you know billion and a half dollar company in the Northeast. I think somebody like him who has been pretty successful sales wise, uh, that would be real. Yeah attractive so it sounds good yeah it's language it's language you want to hear you know i mean i i've been a i've been you know a, a sales manager in a previous life when i was <coughs> fixing a failed business in my 20s and, and that's mm -hmm. the kind of language we want to hear but that's why i maintain that we need different invites for different people because you know an older couple who are looking towards retirement don't need to hear that kind of you know um that kind of language they need to hear a different language and so the language a sales manager wants to hear, what kind of age group would you say Tom is? I, I'd say he's probably late 50s. Okay. So he's still got you know, plenty of working years still in him. He's still, um, yeah, I, I, I absolutely, I think a billion and a half, you know, spearheading growth of a, uh, of a billion and a half dollar company in the Northeast is exactly what he's going to want to hear. It's immediate credibility. Right. Right. Exactly. So, um, yeah, simple, Very good. direct, we we still followed the five rules, being in a hurry. Um, uh, the why was a, was much smaller and was replaced by how impressed you were. You know, you really enjoyed sitting next to him and you were impressed with the way he, you know, conducts himself. Um, if you don't know the why, you could replace it with a compliment. Um, the hook, spearheading the growth of a billion and a half dollar company. I, I don't know if it's going to be your thing, Tom. Take it away so it's nice and gentle and then being really intentional on setting the time. Excellent. Cool. All right. So let's. Where are we now? Eight forty-seven. Okay. Let's move on to Charles. Charles. Yeah. Charles is uh, a guy that I've. Uh, he was also in sales for a company that uh, the industry I'm in. I I work for companies that build flight simulators. So okay. um, Charles created one of the the big expensive products that we used to use in our simulators. So. Um, I've been on the purchasing end recommending his product as an engineer and uh, I've gotten to know him pretty well. He's retired now. Um, he's doing some charitable work, uh, but uh, and I would say he's probably in his uh, early to mid 60s. Do you know if he's got any pain? I mean, he's retired. Um, is he comfortable? Um, his wife is still working. Um, I don't know of any pain that he has. Okay, this is an interesting one. How would you? How do you think you would approach Charles? Hmm. You know, I, I'm thinking that uh, probably. Um, getting his opinion on this one too. Uh, but there's a possibility that, you know, if I went over my why and talked to him about particularly because he's doing charitable things about how we want to help my wife get started. And this is something that's really helping her out. And um, I wondered if he might be interested in seeing it as well. Uh, maybe taking that approach would, would be good. Yeah, I think I, I agree. I th this is a little warmer for me. This is a little bit warm and fuzzy, a little bit warm and fuzzy for me, um, especially if his wife is still working. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would definitely go. I mean, I, you could still talk about being impressed, but we want to make sure we keep the invite relatively short. But I, I would be, you know, I'd give him a call. You know, hey, Charles, uh, it's just Mark. I'm just about to go into a, a business presentation or enter onto a call or whatever it is. Um, and, I, and I know um, you're busy with some of your um, uh, your charity operations. So do you have a minute? 
and he'll say yeah and say well look and then state your why you know um uh you know laurie and i are obviously you know we're in our 50s and we're approaching retirement age i know you're already there and you know we kind of aspire to be where you are but in order to help us you know make sure we get there um we we have started a business project um which is uh working really really well for us in the northeast um and uh i feel very confident that our retirement will be more than full um and more importantly than anything else what that represents for us is i can bring my wife laurie home um uh, so that she can be at home and not still working um and i know whilst you're retired you know your wife is still working and i thought this may be something you know you came into my mind that it may be something that you could um take a look at it may be something you'd like to do as well um, alongside the um, charitable things that you're doing, but especially because it would ha- definitely speed up the process of bringing your wife home. <coughs> Indeed, you know, uh, with your experience, you know, I'd appreciate what even just just what you think about the business. It may or may not be your thing, Charles. Uh, and if it's not, um, the one thing I do respect is obviously your opinion and your ability to be able to connect me with individuals, you know, who it should be suitable for. Um, but what do you do? When's a good time for us to get together? Um, you know, I finish work around six o'clock. There's a hotel near uh, nearby you. There's a lobby there that serves some great coffee. Uh, let's get together, and I'll show you what I'm doing, and, and you know, see if it makes sense for you. Um, as I say, if it doesn't, and that's fine, then I really would appreciate your opinion, and certainly the opportunity for maybe some connections. I think I'd go that type of route. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Yeah, because we've got our why in there. We've got a little bit of opinion. Um, you know, it's a tough one because he's quite comfortable. He doesn't, well, as far as we know, he doesn't have much pain. He does have the charitable things that he's doing, um, but his wife's still working. Uh, and I think that's what I would hook on. Uh, it's yeah. not a lie for you wanting to bring your wife home, um, you know, and, and being able to bring her home. And uh, the fact that she wanted to bring her home with you while you're going home as well is, is you know, is you know beside the bite. So, but I, I think that would be a good approach. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, if you if your why can match their why, then it creates this bond. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that would be really good. Yeah, yeah, very good. You agree with that? Yep. Cool. All right. Again, you know, uh, there's a lot of information on there. Listen back to the recording um, as you create your invites uh, based around that. But you'll notice we did follow all of the five rules again, being in a hurry, having a why, being excited about the growth, and the fact that it's going to fill up your retirement. It may or may not be your cup of tea, but let's get together at this time, at this place, or would this time and this place be better for you? Very intentional in setting the time. Again, Mark, I know you are expert at this. I'm being kind of, I'm emphasizing those things for those those folks on the call who are relatively new, and they take for granted about setting the time. Oh, we'll see you sometime at the weekend. No, we've got to set times, be intentional, because... Trust me, weekends go by, meetings are missed, and unless we're, unless we're intentional, it won't happen. Um, yeah. Mark, that's, we haven't got time really for another invite for right now, but you've definitely got enough to get on with uh, for tomorrow. Yeah, um, So definitely. I guess my so uh, when we get off the call, let's arrange a time when you and I can do our accountability call so okay. that we can go through um, how your invites went. And uh, we can also create some more invites tomorrow as well. Um, was there anything else you wanted to ask? Um, uh, about uh, you know what we've talked about tonight. No, I think that gives me a good start for things. I'm going to uh, write these down specifically uh, for each one, then, and uh, we'll talk some more about when we we'll get together tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, again, and I've said this three or four times, but there's a reason why. Write your invites down um, for those of you uh, who are alumni on the call. Uh, I know that writing invites have changed people's lives. That feeling, that feeling on Monday when you start your week and you're busy at work, knowing you have your 10 names there or certainly enough invites to start your week, plus the invites written down. It's very encouraging. You're already nervous, especially with you know people who are a business owner or an attorney. Or whatever. You're already nervous. So let's Reduce, you're never going to get rid of all of the nerves with sometimes with some of these calls, but let's at least give ourselves the best opportunity to reduce the nerves as much as possible, but, uh, but also make sure that the call is really good in spite of you being nervous. And the way to do that is to write it down and write it down in the five sections of being in a hurry, your why or a compliment or whatever it is. 
the hook, the takeaway, and the intentional time and place that you're going to meet. And that will give you all the confidence that, uh, that you need. Um, and do it for every one of the names you're going to be calling that week. And it's a great feeling on Monday when you've got all the names done and all the invites done and you know that your week is complete. And uh, trust me, it's a, it's a great feeling. So, uh, Mark, thank you so much for getting on the call tonight. Um, thank you. I really appreciate your time and candor. Um, we will, as I say, we'll, we'll text after the call about a time that we can do our accountability call. Um, and I will speak to you sometime tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon or late, late afternoon, early evening. Sounds excellent. Fantastic. Thanks, Mark. All right. So um, thank you again, for, guys, for getting on the call. Hopefully there was a lot of great information there. You've got some uh, – Mark's, Mark's got some invites to some pretty high-end folks there, um, some folks who are close to him and some who are not so close. Um, you heard a variety of different invites, some direct. Some a little bit more warm, where you're sharing your why and their why. Um, great believer in doing that, especially amongst friends, because your friends will care about the fact that you're retiring or the fact that you're trying to get your kids through college without there uh, being any um, college debt once they come out. So um, a lot of good information there. Again, I'll make sure I get this edited and up online, hopefully tonight. Uh, sometimes it's a, it tends to be a big file and takes a little while to get up onto the uh, Facebook page, but I will try to do it tonight so that you can have uh, the reference there for your invites for tomorrow. Um, but uh, no, great call. Really good, solid invites there. Um, so uh, very happy about that. Um, but what I want to do now at 856, I want to make sure that uh, I believe uh, Joey Carter is the guest on the national call. For those of you who don't know who Joey Carter is, uh, Joey Carter is one of the original investors of uh, Ambit Energy. Um, he also is an executive consultant in the business, so he's both at the top and he's also out in the field with us, so he knows um, the business from both angles. Uh, incredibly nice guy, incredibly knowledgeable. Um, he's also been in the direct sales industry for pretty much all of his life. Um, he actually was running a billion-dollar company, um, Home Interior and Gifts, for many, many years before he became an investor in, uh, in Ambit. So very well worthwhile listening to him. To get on the national call, the number is 712-432-7570. Again, 712-432-7570. The PIN code is 84877-POUND. Again, 84877-POUND. Okay, all right, well, we've got a couple of minutes before the, the, uh, that call actually starts. So, guys, just, uh, again, you heard me at the beginning of the call. It's very, very easy to do this business. It's very, very simple to do this business. It's also simple not to do it. In fact, it's simpler. It's so easy to say, oh, I can't be bothered, I can't this, and, and you know, you, one, one gets subject to their moods. But if it's in your calendar, if the alert is there, and you know at the end of the day that someone is waiting for you to report back on how the invites went. It'll make sure you overcome those crappy days or that, you know, when you've just been, you know, you just lost a sale or you just had an argument with someone or whatever. It'll just make sure you get through those moments because you know that someone at the end of the day is going to be waiting for you. So have your 10 names, have your 10 invites, and please make sure you write your invites down and then allocate time in your calendar. You heard Michelle at the beginning of the call say, Take the time to put the time that you're going to make your calls in your calendar. Otherwise, you can go, oh, my goodness me, it's 6 o'clock. I didn't get round to it. Put them in your calendar with an alert. It'll make sure it gets done. So um, there you go. So there's your top 10 names. Get your invites done. Have a fantastic week. Have a structured week. And, guys, listen, look out for the uh, recording on the Facebook page. And um, I will. Uh, there will be a recording tomorrow as well for the accountability call. That I have with Mark. Guys, thank you so much again for getting on the call. Again, this is the best hour investment you could make in your Ambit business. Thank you all very much. Uh, for those of you who are listening to the call um, during the week, oh, you can listen to me on the calls and I'll see you on them. Um, but other than that, I will see you on the first call next Sunday. Have a pleasant Sunday, guys, and I will speak to you all very soon. Thanks very much now.